Welcome into the KSO Show. I'm Mason Voth, flying solo again. Second straight Wednesday where it's just me, so I am sorry to everybody that comes here for Derek Young and Drew Galloway, the guys that actually know what they're doing. Uh, you just get me today to recap what Chris Kleiman had to say yesterday in his uh, weekly press conference. And look, I mean, this is uh, going on a, a couple of weeks stretch where there have to be some, I don't know if they're awkward, but can be uncomfortable at time moments or questions that get asked because of the situation at quarterback and how things are going. Certainly a little bit easier for Chris Kleiman to handle it after a win, but we want to just talk about Chris Kleiman here. We'll, we'll play some audio from Will Howard from when he was available today or on Tuesday, excuse me. And it just, people, people commented about it. So I felt like it was a big enough deal to, to listen to it and uh, kind of take a look at it and, you know, we, we only get a handful of minutes from time to time because you guys are bouncing around trying to get audio and clips from other players. So uh, apparently there's more after it that, that maybe would, would be of more interest. But I'll play a clip that uh, was a string that I just thought you, you could kind of see that the situation, obviously not ideal for Will Howard, and uh, he's trying to do and say the right things, but it's clearly tough on him, and uh, we'll, we'll dive into that as well. But we, we have to start with Chris Kleiman and all the things that he said that were of importance on Tuesday uh, because K-State gets ready for their second straight home game against Houston. It'll be a, a big opportunity for the Wildcats, not necessarily because Houston is any special team or opponent, but because this is such a gettable game, if the Cats win this, they're right back on track to probably where a lot of people thought that they would be at this point in the season at the start of the year, which would be 4-1 and one in Big 12 play. Uh, unfortunately, you would not have had a loss at Oklahoma State in the cards if you thought they were going to be 4-1 and one at this point, at least I don't think so. I think a lot of people would have said, okay, that probably comes against Texas Tech, and that's where I would have been. I thought that the loss would have been to the Red Raiders, but we know Texas Tech is not a very good team right now. Oklahoma State actually happens to be. But one of the questions that was asked of Chris Kleiman today, just kind of interesting to get his answer on, he was asked about uh, what it's like having to prepare now for K-State's first night game or non-night game since week three of the season. I mean, I think if you look in terms of calendar weeks, I think it will have been six weeks since K-State played something that wasn't a night game. Here is the answer from Chris Kleiman. Uh, you, no, there's there's challenges uh, as a coaching staff. We, we love it. Um, we're early morning guys and, and get home really, really late, um, especially when you're on the road. There's big challenges because we had developed a really good routine on Friday and Saturday for the last four weeks. Um, and that has to change. I mean, you just can't say, well, we'll, we'll cram more into Friday. I don't know how much more we can cram into Friday. Uh, and we can't cram anything into a Saturday morning with 11 a.m. kick. So it's something that um, we're not just talking about with coaches. We're talking about with Scott Troush and nutrition. We're talking about with Mindy and her staff with recovery and, and rehab and, and treatments. We're talking about with Coach True in how we get our guys as fresh as they can. It's the catapult stuff. There's a ton of things that we've had meetings on on Monday and Tuesday of how we can, A, get our guys as fresh as we can and how we can maximize the time we have on Friday and Saturday, especially with us being a really early morning start on, on Saturday with our, with our pregame, uh, to throw the fact that it probably isn't going to be 80 degrees on Saturday. All right, one of the key things in there was Kleiman talking about how he and the coaches are mourning people. We know this. We know that this staff loves 11 a.m. kickoffs uh, because whenever a game is on ESPN+, Plus, no fear, this week's game is not on ESPN+, Plus for all of you ESPN+, Plus haters. But whenever a game is on ESPN+, Plus, the home team can dictate when the start of that game is. So some teams will say that they want it to be a night game. Some teams like having the night games. It's you know, it can feel like a bigger time atmosphere, and that will happen. That's why K-State always opens your FCS opponent night game. They guarantee they get at least one at night during the course of the season. It's a good way to kick off the season. Plus, it's typically, you know, blazing hot out that time of year. But after that, it's typically 11 a.m. And we saw this happen last year when K-State lost that game to Tulane at 2.30, where they abandoned the 2.30 game. And it is 11 a.m. if they get the choice, which happened last year against Texas Tech. They chose that they wanted to play at 11 a.m. on ESPN+. Plus. So this team has no problem with 11 a.m. games. In fact, 
I think Chris Klein, if you go and look at it, the the resume and record there in 11 a.m. games is pretty strong uh, for the Cats. I mean, 2020 is, pr- I think, the only year that they've probably struggled too badly with 11 a.m. games. Uh, and obviously this year they do have the one 11 a.m. loss that came to Missouri, but they were competitive in that game, and that obviously turned out to be against a pretty good team this season. So uh, I think 11 a.m. is good for K-State. And some other people have pointed out the weather being a factor in this game. Yeah, probably a little chillier than some of the guys that are on the Houston roster are used to. Also, just, you know, the wet weather that is in the forecast probably benefits K-State because we just know how successful they are at running the football. Um, I mean, they were over 300 yards last week uh, against TCU, and you could probably expect a heavy dose of running against Houston as well. So I I think that this is a good thing for K-State. But it was just kind of fascinating to hear the the process and – the thought that goes into it from Chris Kleiman. All right, now, on to what everybody cares about. That is the quarterbacks. Here's what Chris Kleiman had to say about the approach at quarterback for this weekend because we assume that it's probably not going to be exactly back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like it was against TCU. Seems like an unrealistic way to do things moving forward. You also want to be able to have a pretty clear and concise plan as you get ready for Texas. Uh, which will be on the horizon next weekend. So this is uh, Chris Kleiman on the plan at quarterback. You know, we, we haven't talked about it yet with, with Colin. Um, he and I will visit as the week goes on. Um, I, I, I really don't know. We'll have to wait till Saturday. All right. If you thought I was teasing something that was going to be impactful and give you good insight as to what was going to go on, I'm sorry about that. That was, uh, that was not going to happen there. Just undecided at the moment. That's the answer for Chris Kleiman and, I think that it probably ends up being another feel thing, and they're probably in a position where they can do that against Houston. But I am adamant that you're probably not going to be able to do that against Texas. It would be good to go into that game with a clear and defined plan where you say, okay, Will Howard is our guy. He is going to get 65 to 70% of the snaps, maybe more, if things are going well. But we have this, this, and this situation where we know we want to use Avery Johnson in the game. We want to give him some opportunities. And maybe you give him a series where you think, hey, something is there. Or you can adjust on the fly like they did against Texas Tech. Because I don't think the plan in Lubbock was to go with Avery Johnson for basically, I don't know, two and a half quarters of that game. But it became clear and evident that Texas Tech was not going to be able to stop him so they could shift to that permanently in that game. So maybe that happens there. But it just seems like... K-State's in a position right now where the alternating thing, that was just a product of circumstance. I don't think that they would have anticipated beating TCU that easily and that badly to where they could just kind of do whatever they wanted in that game. I mean, they they probably could have alternated Jake Rubley and Adrian Laura into the game and still won by a wide margin uh, on Saturday. So I think it was more a product of who they played, not the actual system in place. We'll see how it looks moving forward, but uh, obviously not uh, decided yet, and they're probably going to have to look at a lot of things because as D.Y. was quick to mention after the game on Saturday and the instant reaction video that we did, but you know, they, you go into the TCU game looking for answers at quarterback, and if anything, I mean, they both played well. But you came out with more questions than answers, and that puts K-State and Chris Kleiman in a tough spot moving forward, especially as they get ready for – arguably the biggest game of their season next weekend. And that's not to overlook Houston, but that is something to uh, to take note of. Now, one other note on the quarterbacks. Chris Klein was asked how Avery Johnson uh, can still improve. He's, he's been impressive for a freshman, but what's the, the number one area that he can get better in right now? This next game. Just the game operation of everything, whether it's um, getting the signal from the sideline to processing all that, to getting it aligned, seeing the picture on defense, and continuing to play faster. I think that's that's for everybody um, to see it and then play as fast as you can. Uh, but for the quarterback position, it's so imperative that uh, you know what you see pre-snap is what you're going to get post-snap, and he's continuing to get better on those things. And, and I, I think um, some adversity that he had on, on Saturday will make him better. Um, you know, a couple things that uh, he maybe have wanted back or a play or, or way, way we called something or maybe we get mixed up on a signal. I think all those things are growing uh, pains that uh, we're going to have, but he makes so many splash plays that, uh, you know, he's, he's a true freshman. And uh, I'm super proud of him, and uh, he's making us better on offense, as, or making us better on offense, making us better on a, as a team because of what he can do. But he's still learning. So, I mean, there, there you go. That's what Avery Johnson can get better at. 
Uh, and, and that's one of those elements that when it gets talked about, hey, look, you would still ideally want Will Howard to work out and get things back on track this year. That's one of those areas where, and you know, having a true freshman can be tough. All the, the stuff that goes on leading up to the game and the pre-snap stuff in game and, and whatever other decision-making processes that have to go down. But, you know, unfortunately right now for K-State, they're, they're in this position where they have to think about using him. And Avery Johnson is good enough to step up right now and make things happen. And I don't think that's Chris Kleiman saying that Avery Johnson is bad at those things. That's just him making a point and saying, hey, look, th this is the one area that he can still get uh, considerably better at right now for us because he's so good everywhere else for what he does. So that, just something to note there and, and to throw in to give you a little bit more on the quarterback situation. Now, on the flip side of things, the other quarterback in the game on Saturday is going to be Donovan Smith, the player that the Wildcats got to see last season in Manhattan, spent the last two seasons at Texas Tech, saw sporadic time after injuries constantly happening to Texas Tech quarterbacks. I don't think there's a quarterback room in the country that gets beat up more than Texas Tech year in and year out. And Donovan Smith kept the Red Raiders around last year despite some turnovers. And uh, Chris Kleiman had some high praise for the new Houston quarterback. He's a good player. Tons of respect for him. Um, I know his... I know his dad. I've been around uh, watching him play. It seems like he's been playing a long time. Uh, I was really impressed with him last year and uh, really kind of forgot until early in the season where he landed and then looking at the schedule saying, okay, um, we we get him here in whatever it is, week eight, and, and now it's upon us. And uh, if you just <clears throat> watch the, the Donovan Smith tape of uh, explosive runs, big-time throws, uh, he he makes their offense go. I'm very, very impressed with him. We'll see what kind of uh, you know effort Donovan Smith provides over the weekend. It should be made clear, though, if, if the K-State defense is not up to the challenge, Donovan Smith can make things happen. This Houston offense has been productive at times this season. Now, they've had some bad games. I think a lot of people probably think, man, they, they had that really low-scoring game against UTSA. They – you know, had had a bad loss to Rice. They did score a ton of points in that game, though. So there have been the ups and downs with Houston. But if you look overall at Donovan Smith's numbers, he has been really good for the Cougars. I mean, he's almost the 2,000 passing yards on the season, 16 touchdowns, four interceptions. And last week against Texas, he threw for almost 400 yards, three scores, and, and just the one pick. So he can make things happen. He's been very good at times this year. And it is not on Donovan Smith and the Houston receivers for why they have lost games this year. I mean, it's just not. They they have been good. They have been productive. Now, you can argue that maybe it takes some time to get going or they disappear in certain moments. Uh, that's all fair to say. But at the end of the day, Houston's offense has still worked at a pretty high level at times, and Donovan Smith can get them moving in that direction. So this is going to be an important game. For the K-State defense, which Chris Kleiman provided some updates on, we'll start with what he had to say about V.J. Payne and the safeties. Talked about it a lot here on the KSO show in recent weeks, but around the UCF game just after that, Chris Kleiman talked about how they made some switches positionally on the field at, at the safety spot. Same guys, same personnel out on the field, but in different spots, and that's obviously made a big difference for how the safeties have played, including V.J. Payne, who showed a lot of promise last year. Very slow start this year, but it's really picked up things as of late. Yeah, I, you know, V.J.'s a little bit tougher situation because of the switch. You know, he, he, he played four games, whatever it was last year, as the third team strong safety, and we lose the top two guys. And so he was really thrust into a position that he had to play. Um, and then in the spring or in spring, we switched positions with him because we had Kobe back and Kobe didn't play a ton of snaps in spring, but we switched positions, trying to get both of them on the field, went through fall camp, did all that stuff. And then we found out that he was better suited at one spot and we were going to try Kobe at the other spot. And, um, you know, we, we talked about it and coach Kleinem, it's such a, a, a brilliant detailed secondary coach that he talks in terms of understanding all three spots 
but you still have to get experience at those spots rather than just seeing it from a board or seeing it from a film. And so um, just watching, I thought BJ's played two of his better games the last couple weeks as he's getting more comfortable. I thought Kobe Savage has played two of his better games as he's getting more comfortable. You're just seeing things from the middle of the field or you're seeing things from the boundary safety, and it's just different pictures. But both of them have settled in and are playing with a lot of confidence. The last three games for the safeties has been really good. You've seen better play out of them. Still a few mistakes here and there, but overall they've been very impactful for the K-State defense, and that's not just because they came away with the three interceptions against Texas Tech, but they're making some plays back there. Marquis Siegel even is a guy that is getting involved in more and more plays, getting his hands on some balls, and uh, my, my bold pick uh, for this coming week is that he finally gets that interception on Donovan Smith, so we'll just have to wait and see. Other news defensively came on the injury front. A couple of things to watch there. Also, some pass catchers that had some injuries that Chris Kleiman gave quick updates on today. Um, I can't answer that right now. Uh, Romaine did practice uh, yesterday, but he practiced late last week and just wasn't able to go. Uh, ben didn't practice, but that was probably assumed. Uh, it's probably too early in the week to to – make a determination on either of those kids um you know it, it, they're probably game time decisions I think RJ's further along um Keegan got got hurt late in the first half and similar to Ben and Austin we just got to wait and see how the week goes but uh, I think RJ will be okay all right so we'll talk about the three pass catchers in, the, in a second but quickly Austin Romain at linebacker the injury, we'll see, says Chris Kleiman. He, he practiced last week, didn't really mean much for him, and so he was out there yesterday, and we'll just have to kind of monitor that situation. I, I think that Austin Romain is important and impactful to have on the field. I mean, he is a guy that very early in the season, you noticed him quite often getting into the mix and, and being just able to stand out on the field, which is sometimes the most important thing to do early in your career. But the one thing that K-State has shown is that they just keep plucking guys that can keep filling in at linebacker. Now, eventually you'll run out of that depth and something bad will happen, like Jake Clifton getting a, a, an iffy targeting call uh, against Texas Tech and you lose another guy. So it's important to have the depth there. But for now, K-State still has three very capable linebackers and Jake Clifton, Austin Moore, and, um, and Des Purnell, who had an awesome game against TCU over the weekend. So I would just say that that's something to keep in mind. Now, in terms of the pass catchers, R.J. Garcia, whatever at this point, like uh, I, I, think, I think it's on to just holding out hope that next year is the year that R.J. Garcia actually takes a step forward and makes a pop uh, because uh, it started out with some promise this year, but he's really not been that noticeable uh, in, in the last handful of games. So I wouldn't worry too much about that one. If he goes, great. If not, I don't think we're going to notice a different one one way or the other. Keegan Johnson, that's one. Man, it's, it's just this, this guy's situation cannot get out of the way because when he's had the ball in his actual hands this season, Keegan Johnson has looked like a legitimate tool and weapon that can be used for K-State. He's just had a tough time being out there and being at 100%, and we thought that maybe last week was the week that you would force-feed Keegan Johnson a little bit more, and he didn't even end up with a single catch, got banged up in the game, didn't play in the second half. Now we're sitting here waiting and watching to see uh, the next time that he can get on the field healthy again. So the Keegan Johnson thing, interesting, but at least we know that K-State is starting to find some other guys like Jace Brown at receiver that can step it up and they can make do. Plus, the passing game is not the biggest element for them right now. It's on the running game. But in the passing game, one major impact is the injury to Ben Sennett. He went down just before the end of the first half, I believe it was. Yeah, it would have been the, the first half. So he goes down, and K-State went through a pretty significant stretch there where there was a lull in the offense where I think they, they threw eight straight incompletions, both quarterbacks in the game, so it didn't matter who it was. That has a lot to do with Ben Sennett not being on the field. Ben Sennett is so big in so many different ways. Number one, he is your most reliable pass catcher. But number two, so much time, effort, and energy is put into defending Ben Sennett by other teams. that when he's not on the field, that goes away. Teams are not as focused on him, and they can branch out 
and they can shift equal focus to everybody on the field, and it clearly has an impact on the K-State offense. So Benson, even when he's not catching the ball, but actually able to be out there on the field, that's significant for K-State. So that probably is the most important injury of the four that Chris Kleiman discussed on Tuesday to monitor moving forward. If Ben Sennett is out, uh, that that could impact the K-State offense in a serious way on Saturday against Houston. And certainly if this thing were to extend uh, into next weekend against Texas where it even limited him, uh, that would that would really hurt K-State's chances. So Ben Sennett is probably the most important uh, injury thing to keep an eye on. All right. Final thing we will get to here today on the KSO show is Will Howard and, and his speaking yesterday at the press conference for K-State. Look, it's a tough situation that he's in. He probably feels like every single year this is what he's going through. He's either the, the backup coming in to take somebody's job for a little bit, and you know the first two years he didn't really take anybody's job. He just had to be the guy by default. He struggled, so there was – you know, murmurs and everything there. Then last year he comes in, he gets the job for a couple games because Adrian Martinez can't go. Martinez comes back against Texas, gets hurt against Baylor, and Will Howard comes back in and is the guy. So every year of, of Will Howard's career, there has been a quarterback conversation at K-State. And finally, for the first time ever, it felt like this was going to be the year that wasn't the case. He was the unquestioned starter. This was his job. And then the offense started to sputter and struggle. They had an awful night in Stillwater. They were looking and looking to get touchdowns in Lubbock. And the answer ended up being Avery Johnson for that game. And however you want to look at it, unfortunate or not, this is the situation that Will Howard and K-State is in right now. And Will Howard was asked about how it's going down for him. And, and here's a look and why, and listen to kind of what was going on with him and just We'll break it down after. How much did your situation with Adrian last year kind of prepare you for, for this year when you were almost kind of on the flip side of that? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, obviously it is what it is. And, like, you know, um, I guess uh, I feel like I've been in this situation quite a few times now. And, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I just have learned to, you know, deal with it and, and understand that, um, you know, I got to – Got to take care of the team first, and that's kind of who I am. So, um, yeah, it's. I think you know Avery's got a really bright future, and anything I can do to help that kid, I, I'm gonna do. Did you see the quarterback ratings for the weekend? Uh, uh, I heard something. No, I, I yeah, I did. I did. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. It's crazy though that how does that affect your rhythm? I mean, you're used to going out. Quarterbacks go out every series. It's got to be totally yeah. weird. Yeah, uh, it's it's different, um, but. It's not up to me, so, uh, you know, I. Uh, it, it is what it is. Got to control what you can control, right? I'm curious, are you fresher in the fourth after only playing half the season? I, I guess you could say that. Um, you know, you could also say that you're you're not getting as many plays, so you're not in the rhythm. So, I, you know, I, I, there's different ways of looking at it. I don't know. I mean, it worked last game, so. So, a couple of things are apparent there. Will Howard is, like anybody would be in a situation – uncomfortable and probably unsure of how to handle it. Uh, he says all the right things. And I, and I truly believe him when it comes to talking about supporting Avery Johnson and all the stuff that he does there. I think that's legit. I don't think that that is just for show, but you can do all that. And at the end of the day, still be frustrated, still be disappointed. And, and you know, maybe in some ways be embarrassed at how the situation has gone down. And I think it's clear that that probably is leaking in a little bit for Will Howard. And that's just human nature. I mean, that, that's, that is how almost everybody would react in this situation where you have something, you think it's yours, you probably deserve it to be yours, and you just go through a funk for whatever reason. And you're struggling and somebody else comes in and they're you know taking some things off your plate or just kind of swiping the job from you. And that's not, that's not fun for Will Howard to, to sit there and, and probably see somebody else take the shine that was supposed to be his this year. And I think that, that what we are going to, to see continue is stuff like this, where this is a delicate situation that has to be balanced. And if you listen to anybody that talks about it um, and has any experience at all with this, it's a tough thing to approach and it's a tough thing to go through. I mean, I, I thought, 
what Curry Sexton said on Powercat Game Day when I was driving up to Manhattan this past weekend. I thought it was interesting to to hear what he had to say about what it was like for the 2013 team to go through the Jake Waters, Daniel Sam stuff. And I think a lot of those guys on that team would uh, talk about that and just kind of what a weird situation that is and how it can end up being tough on them and other guys on the team. It's not just the quarterback and it's not just the the coordinator and it's not just the head coach. It, it, it extends to everybody in some way on these teams. But, you know, I, I think Will Howard is trying to do the best he can with the situation. He is – he's doing he's doing things in a in a good enough way it's just clear that it's tough on him right now and I think uh, it's going to be something to monitor moving forward and I I mean I I don't necessarily know what the the point ends up being on the the Will Howard stuff because you can tell what's going on there but what does that actually mean in terms of the season I mean I, I don't think that Obviously, it didn't impact it on Saturday. He he came out and he played pretty well on Saturday. And so it didn't impact him on the field yet. It's one of those things that it may just impact things elsewhere in other elements. And it's not even necessarily that it's going to impact Will Howard. But it's just something to keep in mind and, and to follow along with this situation. Because there is obviously some discontent there. Uh, you can hear it in some of the answers talking about, you know, and not up to, to me or, you know, oh, yeah, maybe I am fresher, but also, you know, could make the argument not out there as often. So, like, not questioning the decision making necessarily, but just pointing out that, mm, yeah, I mean, we're doing it one way right now, but there's another way we could do this. And, and that would probably be my preferred method. That's what I pick up on there. So, it's just uh, it's an odd deal for K State right now, and it's not just about managing who's going to give you more results in the immediate on the field performance, but also you have to consider uh, what kind of long term mental toll this is going to take on the two quarterbacks in in the spot right now, and then also their teammates and how it gets handled moving forward and. Ideally, if you're K-State, that is the number one thing that gets settled in this game against Houston. And I will again be on record and say that what I would what I would prefer to see for K-State have happen on Saturday is that Will Howard goes out there and, you know, given if it was perfect weather conditions, this would be, he goes out there, he throws for 300 yards, four touchdown passes, no picks. It's a clean game. It looks great. It looks like the Will Howard we expected this year because – I still truly believe that that version of Will Howard, the the version of Will Howard that won K-State a Big 12 title last season, that is the best quarterback option for this K-State team in 2023 if they want to get back to Arlington and if they want to be a 9 or 10 win team this season. But I'll be honest and transparent with my thoughts on this. I'm still doubtful that that version of Will Howard gets back. We saw a step in the right direction on Saturday against TCU. But I just don't know that it's going to fully get back to that point. And if you can't get fully back to that, this offense and this team seems to move better, seems to be more motivated, and have a little bit more get up and go with Avery Johnson as their quarterback. So we'll just have to see how it goes down this weekend against Houston. They got to get it figured out before that Texas game because you cannot go in there having your dress rehearsal be the real deal. And in the moment, having to figure out, do we go back and forth with the quarterbacks? Do we stick with the guy? Who are we sticking with? Just not going to work. Doesn't seem like it's going to work. Would not advise doing that. That will do it for this edition of the KSO Show. I'm Mason Vo. Thank you for listening. Stay locked in with everything we have going on at K-State Online, part of On3. So head over there. Get signed up if you're not. Check out everything going on on the message boards, as well as all the great written content. Lots of recruiting info this week. I mean, Big visitor weekend this past week. Some important visitors upcoming this weekend for football. Also, major basketball visitor in Patrick and Gongba this weekend as the Cats are going to have to try and close the deal, box out Duke and some of the other Blue Bloods that are trying to chase down in Gongba. So we'll see how the Cats come out there. And uh, also plenty of coverage from the most recent commits for the Wildcats over on the YouTube page. So, Keep following on with everything at K-State Online, and we will be back on Friday with the pregame pod. D.Y. back with me. We will give our thoughts and opinions on the Houston game this weekend, 
also some best bets and a look around the Big 12. So that will do it for me. Thanks for watching K-State Online.